Hi, I'm Joe Farr and I'm doing a masterclass on how to prepare your tracks for mastering, uh, get the best out of your mix. Um, I'm here to point out any mistakes or things that are way out in the mix, uh, offer tips and tricks uh, so you can move forward and get it as good as you possibly can. So uh, I'm doing this in association with Fold and they've collected uh, quite a few tracks, I think 150 or thereabouts, and they've sent me through 15. Uh, I haven't listened to them yet, so I'm just going to whiz through. I've got about four minutes per track. Uh, so yeah, let's get to it. So first track we've got is by All Trades, and it's called Shred. I think it's that way around, could be the other way around. Let's take a listen. So because I haven't got much time, I'm just going to sort of flick through as I normally would when I analyse any track. So I've got a little controller down here which I can solo the sides, so the width, the stereo of the mix, or I can solo the mid to check any problems. So if you hear it go weird at any point, that's probably what what is happening. So that's the mid. And that's just the sides. Yeah, nice, nice. It's kind of like a weird little break there that I'm not sure if there's something weird going on or if it's meant to be, but it sort of confused my brain a bit. Almost sounds like it's skipping, maybe take a look at that. I can hear some little clicks where samples haven't been trimmed properly. That's always um, frustrating because when I'm mastering stuff I have to go in to an audio editor and pick out the little clicks, it's quite time consuming. So if you can do that in your pre-master, that will make the mastering engineer very happy and it will make for a cleaner mix, cleaner master. Yeah, mix is sounding pretty tight overall. Uh, I'd say hi-hats are a little bit sharp, but that's nothing you couldn't sort out in mastering. Bass is big and punchy and yeah, it's sounding great. Just have a bit more of a listen towards the end. Yeah, uh, top, top marks really. There's a few little details you could work on there. Maybe try tone down the hi-hats a tiny bit, you know, tiny bit harsh. Um, but yeah, sort out those clicks. Maybe take a look at those funky little break cut things around um, the sort of two, two minute 20 mark. Uh, not sure if they're 
supposed to be like that or not, but either way, take a look. So yeah, uh, it's a banger. Right, let's move on. Second track is by, well, I'm not sure which way around again. Basis change, it's called circling. Um, just to talk you through these other tools, I've got just a VU meter up here, so I can kind of see how loud things are or how much headroom I've got. Let's see where I'm aiming at. And then this, as I said earlier, is the mid and the side, so I can solo that with my controller. And then an EQ, which is not processing anything, it's just analyzing. Uh, the white is the mid, uh, the mid is in the, the mono signal, the center, and the blue is the sides or the width, the stereo. So yeah, same again, let's go for it. Yeah, nice. I would say that's pretty much ready for mastering. Well, it is ready for mastering, but a couple of things I would suggest is could try and push up the mid-range um, a little bit, so we'll get some of those details um, coming out. So, for example, I, I'm just going to turn on my EQ here. I would just concentrate on the center of the image for this because you've got plenty of width with the pads and the atmospheres. But I would try pushing. Around this area. the track can take it you know there's there's nice solid low end going on the highs are nice and clean um, the atmosphere is great but it's quite far to the sides quite wide so if you can bring up the center of the image uh, around the mid-range I think that would just bring it together a little bit more But yeah, better still, you do it on the individual parts rather than an overall EQ move like I've done there. Because then you can focus on the bits you want to bring out rather than bringing out everything. Yeah, top marks, well done. Right, next track, we are, I'm just gonna take that EQ off before I make a stupid mistake. Next one is by Cathal McCafferty, McCaffrey, I think, and it's called 140 Reese Test. 
So this one's been hit with a limiter, but it's not too bad. It's still got some dynamics. So that's why I didn't request a new new file of this one. But it is an MP3, which is a little bit disappointing, but I'll let you off this time. Um, yeah, always best to send demos as a WAV. Uh, obviously, always best to send pre-masters as a WAV. Um, but yeah, let's go for it anyway. Right. Having a fit there, sorry about that. Yeah, okay, so mix is pretty tight, everything's in its place, but overall, I'd say it's unbalanced. Uh, so So if I was mastering this, <clears throat> I'll tell you what I was, I'd do if I was mastering it and then you can fix the mix to reflect that. So I would just put a shelf on it basically. I'd turn the EQ on as well because that is probably a good start. Also, the low end uh, is pretty nice and tight, but I can hear the the width of it is uh, interfering with the sort of main focus and punch of the kick and bass. So I would put a high pass filter, but only on the sides. So obviously, leave the the mids alone. And then I would push the center image of the base up a little bit to compensate so you're kind of losing this muddiness of the bass line which is on the sides and you're just upping the center image of the base which is always going to give you more power and focus especially in a club yeah so if you could do that with your your kick and your reese bass line um, just boost the kick a little bit take the width down of the Reese uh, and then work on your the tops and the mids because they're all just a bit loud in the mix I mean it's nothing major it's just a few tweaks to bring it into balance I'd probably dip the hi-hats a touch as well yeah and then I'd run it through all the hardware and bring it together nice uh yeah so if what that says to me is your room is probably giving you the wrong idea or your headphones um so if you don't already get sonar works for your headphones um i wouldn't bother with it for your room unless you're like super serious about acoustic treatment but to have a flat reference for quite a small amount of money just get sonar works they they do a correction curve for pretty much all models of headphones and they do a free trial so you can test it out. Cool, I'm just gonna get rid of this EQ. 
and then we're going to move on to the next one which is called it's a big no-no they haven't put their name on it so it's called cold slice 2 i'm sure you know who you are name your files okay let's have a listen Uh, that's well put together and some nice sound design elements huge bass <laughs> I would just work on trying to smooth out, round off some of the higher end stuff, especially the snare is quite, what's the descriptive word, pokey in the, in the high range. <laughs> This is something I, I would sort in mastering. So if, if you're happy with how it sounds, you know, it might be more hassle than it's worth trying to fix each individual sound, where, whereas a mastering engineer could just um, take that harshness out with a, with a couple, of, couple of tricks. Just a couple of nice plugins that do the job, or a valve compressor would probably warm that up a bit. A little bit of EQ maybe. Let's just have a little play with that. Yeah, sort of around the five six K mark. So if you, yeah, if you can control those elements individually and just tweak them a little bit, EQ a little bit of the harshness out of there, then I think you've got a winner. suggestion would be with the synth that you've got there if you check out this area on the EQ look at the blue that's the width the sides of the image uh, if you could get that bring that up a bit more in the center it'll probably give it a stronger image and uh, again if it's destined for the club which some sound systems are mono uh, it, you know, it's disastrous if you've got a huge wide synth and then you play in a club on a mono system and you just lose all that image and your track sounds like shit. So yeah, maybe work on that a bit. You just use a mid-side EQ to bring up some of the center and take out some of the width. Just find that balance so that when you do your mono check, which is golden rule number one, um, you don't lose all your image. Cool, moving on. Let's go for the next one. 
just open it up a bit. This one's been slammed a bit as well, but still got some dynamics. So yeah, if you're sending a demo or you know something like for this masterclass, just leave the limiter off, leave a bit more headroom. It's easier to analyze and work on. Let's get rid of that EQ. All right, this one's by Compass and it's called Continuum, I think, yep. It's a bit of a nasty click on the kick drum at the end there. Maybe intentional, but probably isn't. So just trim your kick there. I, I can still hear it when the rest of the stuff is in. Give it a little fade. Probably bring those hats down a little bit. In fact, if I was mastering this, I'd probably shelve it. <laughs> I don't mean that, like, put it on the shelf. I mean, use a shelf EQ. I'd probably do it with hardware, but just for this I would to show you visually probably be something like that. and I would go further still on those high notes. Yeah, apart from that, everything's sitting nicely, everything's got its place. It's just overall, the balance of the mix is a little bit off. Again, same as advice as the, not the last track, the one before. It's just about getting Sonar Works for your headphones to give you that flat reference. Um, and then you'll just be able to hear this kind of stuff straight away. Um, talking of referencing, yeah, reference against other tracks, that will always give you... Uh, a nice clue as to where, how far off or how close your mix is to being great. Yeah? I'll just flick on and off the EQing and as with with audio it always takes a little while for your ears to get used to it so you probably didn't notice whilst I was EQing it that it was changing that much but when you do an AB you do. <laughs> so on ABing I think I've probably cut the highs a little bit too much so probably somewhere around there. Yeah, so if you tweak those individual bits, the hi-hats, the shakers. Um, and possibly bring up some of the mids a little bit. Maybe the shelf was a bad idea. Yeah, because without this high-end EQ, it's, it's hurting my ears a bit. Yeah, otherwise, nice, nice and punchy, nice sounds. Uh, right, let's move on to the next one. So this one is by Goma. It's Goma. Go Goma. Called Dissonance. It says Lex Liebert at the end of it. So whoever you are. Let's check it. I'm just going to turn this one up a little bit. So we're nearer to the other ones. Woo! 
Um, you haven't cut your kick properly. You can hear a little when this kick, when the section ends here, you can hear a little click. Get rid of that. Okay, that's pretty nicely balanced. I would say the kick has got a bit too much slap in it, especially... At, well, you can hear it more at the start because there's less elements there, so... It's just a... You can see it punching up here. Slapping, even. I would probably take out a bit of the high, a uh, bit of the high mids out of the synth, the sort of growly synth. Yeah, it's just a slightly unbalanced, but not a lot really. I would, if I was mastering this as is, I would high shelf the tops and I'd probably warm up the lows a little bit. You know, it's very slight, so individually just... I th is there a bait? Yeah, on the kick I would just warm it up around the 50, 60 hertz area, and then on those hi-hats and the main synth... Take a bit of pressure out of the top. Otherwise, all good, sounding great. There's a 16th pattern shaker, which is just coming out of the left. Um, I would just put pan it to the middle because it is club music, so there isn't any point in hard panning anything unless you know it's a perfect setup, which most clubs aren't, and a lot of clubs are mono. So, yeah, I wouldn't ever bother hard panning anything for a club track. Yeah, not far off, good stuff. Uh, right, next is, has, yeah, I think we're doing all right for time. This one is Human Selection. It's called They Pretend to Love You. Let's just turn the EQs off, let's get it going. <laughs>
yeah, that's sounding good. Uh, the bass is pretty huge, so I would compress that. I'm just going to EQ it here, but normally I would compress that. And maybe bring up the 303 a bit. It's a little bit lost in the mix. sounding great um, so you can see from the EQing that's what I think I think there's a bit too much sub the 303 could come up a bit or the sort of mid range of the 303 and the hats could come down a touch <laughs> Uh, this one's been limited pretty hard as well, which I can hear a bit on this. Um, yeah, overall pretty well balanced. Just a couple of tweaks. Right, next is Justinus Velutus. Velutus. It's called Scanners uh, MP3. Uh, uh, uh. But you're all right for this time. Right, let's go for it. Yeah, nice. Uh, I'm thinking this one could be glued together a bit more, so maybe some parallel compression on the drums and the bass line sort of all together. Um, if you don't know about parallel compression, look up New York compression and you'll get some good information. Um, the great thing about it is you can really push it and because it's mixed in parallel, uh, you don't lose the dynamics of your mix, so you get the nice hefty, compressed, even distorted sound, but mixed in with uh, your clean sound. So, yeah, maybe experiment with that. I'd say the snare is a little bit... Uh, there's a bit too much in the highs on the snare, so I reckon you could do this EQ here that I've done just on the snare alone. Turn down the hi-hats a little bit, uh, let me just have another listen. Uh, there's a cool 
plugin that I've got, which I'm just going to try something. So this is like a mid-side processor uh, with different types of harmonic distortion that you can really focus on individual parts of the mix. So on here, I reckon the kick drum could do with just a little bit of overdrive. So I'm going to turn off this one. Off, yeah, keep this one on. Sorry, that's still, yeah. And I'm only going to focus it on the low. It's quite small to see, but trust me, it's just going to do the lows. Yeah, that's what I do. I put individually on the track. Just use a basic overdrive on the kick drum, just for a little bit of harmonics on there. If you like, it's your track though, it's up to you. Um, just get rid of that. Uh, another thing I was gonna say is on the low. Sorry. You can see right down here at the, the frequencies we can't really hear. There's quite a bit of energy going on. I think it's only when the bass line's in. It's gone. Maybe it was from me messing about with that plugin. Anyway, yeah, a couple of things to tweak there, but nothing major, and play around with parallel compression. Right, next track is Mind Break. So many freaks. It's a little bit loud, I'm just gonna turn it down. Let's check it. I'm going with the hi-hats. Uh, this one is the sides because it seems to be panned to the left. Uh, as I said before, for a club track, I just keep the hi-hats central. Um, and overall, the hi-hats are a bit too loud as well. Then there's a bit of an issue with this one in terms of the bass. There's a lot going on. So you've got a big bass line and a big kick drum. It's, uh, it's like the holy grail of techno is trying to fit those two things in um, so you've got a big rolling bass line I think you can hear it here at the start and the bass line is modulating I think because you've maybe got two sine waves slightly um, pitched apart I'm not sure but either way it's interfering with the kick drum And I think one of the notes may be out of tune, I'm not quite sure. So there's some work to do there and the way I would approach that is with side chaining uh, and frequency specific side chaining. So there's, a, there's only one plugin that does it I think, or you can probably make your own routing system. But just use this plugin, it's called Track Spacer by Waves Factory and it'll take the signal of your kick drum and you can specify which uh, 
region of frequency affects your sidechain signal. So in this case, you just select, uh, I wonder if I've got it on here. Da -da -da -da. Waves, track spacer. Yeah, so you would choose the side chain. I don't normally make tracks in Reaper, which is this software. Uh, you choose your sidechain signal of the kick, and then you'd um, use this to take out the high frequencies, so they would be unaffected, take it down to 150 or something, and then this affects how much of an effect it, the kick drum has on the lowering of the bass at the same frequency. That's a mind melter. Anyway, yeah, get that, experiment with that, but you still got to have your work cut out because you've got a lot to fit in there. It's doable, but um, just takes a bit of work and solo it, solo the bass and the kick. Listen, listen, listen. the level of the bass is too loud as well so you could bring that down a touch which would help uh, help with the issues down there um. but yeah that's 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 uh, that's a big one really because dance music electronic music everything revolves around the kick and the bass really especially with uh, techno yeah, so a few things to work on there. Moving on, before we run out of time, we are listening to Pagan, and it's called Closing Scene. Let's just bypass that, get it playing. Uh, one thing I'm noticing on the bass line there is the third note, I think, sounds like it should be shifted to the left a bit. The third and fourth notes, I think, could be tightened up. Maybe check that. Uh, overall mix-wise, I think you could have a little bit more lows in the kick and the bass. And overall, the highs and the mids are a bit much, but only a little.
yeah, again with that one on the bass line, you could side chain a little bit with the bass just to get it a breathing a little bit more. quite wide uh, around the mid-range the synth right? loads of those synths <clears throat> can be super wide so yeah a bit of mid side EQ to bring down the sides a bit and push up the mid I would recommend that <laughs> so, yeah tweak the notes of that bass maybe a bit of side chaining then you're pretty much there <clears throat> excuse me next one is sherbet 2 counting sheep <laughs> seems like someone hasn't been sleeping very well through lockdown let's have a listen just turn the eq off track um, it's busy I can hear a second bass thing that comes in here which sounds like it's just pushing too much pressure on the mix and ducking everything else out maybe a li little bit of tightening up on the low end um, I can't hear the punch of both kicks, but I don't know if that's part of the kick pattern, if that's intentional or not. Um, but yeah, have a look at that. So the synth, the little triplet pattern, it's not a triplet, but a three note pattern could do with some mid-range. It's getting harsh there around the 2-3k mark hurting my ears <laughs> but I see what you're doing um, I think if you're filtering something like that and it's resonant uh, it's gonna push the volume big time so if you still want the effect but don't want it to kill people's ears just automate the volume out down a bit whilst uh, that's happening <laughs> this bit here so 2k <laughs> Nice drop. Yeah, 
Nice track. Um, just a little bit of tidying up, really. I'd say the kick, this uh, mid rangey bit, bring the synth up, bring the uh, mid range of the synth up a little bit, and the hi hats get quite powerful. <laughs> And then there's quite a wide thing going on. <clears throat> uh. The knocking. I'd say that's a little bit too loud in the mix. Let me just turn that down the sides. Of that. Yeah, turn that sound down a bit. Yeah, otherwise it's cool, yeah, just a few tweaks to make there to bring it together. Right, next we have Slav, uh, the track's called Hemus. Let's go for it. say there's too much smack on that kick. It's gonna make a joke about smack problems then, but bad taste. I would EQ the top out of that kick a bit. play around with it, just to sort of get it a bit more rounded. Still have enough impact there for it to cut through, even if you take out a fair few decibels. Right, let's crack on. out for the width on those shakers because when I'm doing a mono check there they they drop in volume quite a bit so I'd bring them up in the center some more So a few EQ moves there, you could probably see what I'm getting at. A little bit more low. Maybe some low mids as well to bring out the details on, on the synth. Uh, and I'd say there's too much going on in the highs, high mids and highs. It's getting a bit harsh, but otherwise, yeah, great. It's thumping along nicely, that one. Next track, Speedy Wonder. Uh, and it's called TY. Just boost the gain a bit. Uh, turn the EQ off. Let's give it a listen. glitch there I think
check that out. Yes, it's sounding good. It's a little bit unbalanced. I'd say it needs a bit more sub on the kick, a bit more weight. Um, the, the kind of driving, droning bass line thing, two six. I was going to say it could come down a bit, but it's not too bad. In fact, I think it's probably fine. But yeah, things are getting pretty, pretty spicy up the top. So I would, if I was mastering it, I would, I'd put the right shelf on it for a start. I might do it with uh, with a DSR just to take out the impact of some of those highs, but I think it's overall it needs bringing down there. quite a lot of width at the very top sort of above 10k as well so I would yeah maybe try and have a bit less width on your hi-hats or the rides up there because it is getting quite intense <laughs> on, on the high end Yeah, a few, few little things to do there. Work on that kick, try and bring the bass and the kick more as one. Um, by pushing the sub on the kick, I think that'll help. And then, yeah, just a bit of EQ on the individual elements, uh, on the hi-hats, the rides, the synths, just to bring some of the energy out the top. Just a little bit on each will equate to what I've done here. Uh, also, the width at the very tops, you could narrow that down. Cool, nice, a uh, couple more to go. Next one is by Thales Constantini. Sorry if that's wrong. Uh, it's called Heavy Inside. Let's turn the EQ off.
nice. Nice sound design. Huge sub. Uh, I'd say a little bit more on the low end. Maybe it's more the kick than the sub. Yeah, I'd maybe bring the sub down a little bit, push the kick up a touch. That'll sort of bring them together a bit more. Uh, it's getting a h bit harsh around the 3K area. And it could be a stylistic thing, but there's not much going on up top, sort of 10K and up. I know that's a kind of stylistic thing, maybe. But maybe there's some elements there that you could push up to bring out some detail there. There's a kind of bleep noise there around 2K mark, which is a bit peaky. You could maybe compress that a bit. if you can get that kick more punchy and more glued together with the bass it would bring the mix together more and if you can take some of the harshness out maybe bring a bit of top end in there I think that'll balance it out nicely banger right let's turn that EQ off last track for this session it's by Ursula it's called Blade Leaf Iris Sound like a radio DJ, right. Let's go. kind of main synth element there is pan to the left um, so I would say try and bring that to the center because it's a quite a main element and again it's club music you want it to be direct not to say there's anything wrong with having a bit of width but I would say bring that that one more to the center <laughs> Say there's a touch too much bass in there maybe the kick's a bit loud overall Let's bring that down about three decibels some nice noisy bits in the background there it's kind of um, white noisy splashes uh, I think you could bring them up in the mix a fair bit because I haven't really heard a hi-hat or anything, which is fine. Um, but you might want to bring some, some of the other elements already there to fill that space. Maybe that is a hi-hat. Bring it up, whatever it is.
Yeah, so nice. Overall, that's not far off. I'd just say bring up, bring out some of the detail in the mid-range and the high of most of the elements, apart from the kick, which I think bring down a little bit in the mix. Yeah, so that's it for this session. Uh, thank you all for submitting your tracks and getting involved, and I'll probably be doing another one of these pretty soon. Uh, thanks to Fold for inviting me to participate in the, in the event. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Take care.